Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and we are once again in Orange County, California at John Wayne International, this time in the Real Air Simulations Beechcraft Duke B60 version 2. What a mouthful that is. Um, you may recall I reviewed this a while ago on the, ch on the channel. It's version 2 of their, their Duke and it's probably one of my all-time favorite aircraft. So I thought I would use that for what we are going to do today. And what we are going to do today is the V2 exam and test on Pilot Edge. Now, I did a couple of videos on Pilot Edge. Pilot Edge is a professional subscription-based training network for ATC. The focus is really on accurate radio procedures and radio usage, and it's used by a lot of flight schools to actually train people in how to do ATC for real once they're in their aircrafts. Um, in the real world. So it's, it's a very high quality training network, sounds very different to VATSIM, it's a much higher quality service than VATSIM because it's guaranteed. No matter where you go in California, you're gonna have 24 seven, well not even 24 seven, sorry, I think it's 15 seven, so 15 hours a day, seven days a week coverage from qualified, highly trained and paid air traffic controllers. Now the V2 exam is a simple cross country trip this is a fully loaded video. What that means, if you've seen this channel any length of time, you already know what it means, but it means we're running a bunch of add-ons, but also more than one computer. So let me whiz you over to the second computer, which is this one. And you can see here, I've got skyvector.com up. Now, I'm introducing a whole bunch of stuff to you today. Skyvector.com is a free flight planning service online using accurate sectional charts and various other types of charts. We're using a sectional today. And you can see I've already got a route here, and it's starting down here. Let me scroll that up here. Starting down here, John Wayne, Orange County, KSNA, all the way up to the northeast to Paradise VOR, and then turning to head towards Ontario International, also in California. Not to be confused with Ontario, Canada. Now, there is a slight deviation of the route here. We are going to fly towards Paradise, but about six miles, seven miles or so before it, we will turn to the north. And the reason why is this big yellow mass on the map here, which is hilly or mountainous terrain, extending up to about three or four, even 5,000 feet in some places. We are going to be cruising at 3,000 feet. So if we were to continue all the way out to paradise here, we would actually plant ourselves on the side of a hill, which we're not going to do. So we will turn prior to that, head north into Ontario. Now the V2, as I said, is a simple cross-country flight. Simple, <laughs> um, simple, but with flight following and VFR advisories from air traffic control. So you're under control from ATC all the time. Obviously, we're going to need to file a clearance on a flight plan here at John Wayne. Then we'll transfer over to uh, the tower, sorry, to ground um, for our taxi clearance. We'll taxi out to the runway. Then we'll be on the tower until we take off. They will then hand us over. Look at all these things here. SoCal Approach, SoCal Approach, SoCal Approach. They will hand us off to SoCal Approach um, after we leave their airspace, which is about this circle. Once we leave their airspace, we'll be in SoCal Approach's airspace. They will monitor us until we leave their airspace, at which point they'll tell us, continue on your own, good luck. Once we get up here in this magenta arc here, then it's over to SoCal Approach once again, this time on 135.4, uh, who will handle us all the way into Ontario before handing us off to Ontario Tower, who will then tell us directions to land, you know, which pattern to enter, which runway to expect. And once we land, we'll probably be handed off once again to Ontario Ground for the taxi to parking. So lots and lots and lots and lots of radio frequencies and controllers to deal with today. It's a little bit intense. Now, before we jump in the cockpit, let me show you some neat stuff here with Sky Vector. Um, I've got my route in. You can see I've already planned it in on the lines here, and it's on this little table to the left. I can click on any of these airports to get information on the airport. So John Wayne, we can see the elevation of the airport is 56 feet, so it's pretty much sea level. And we can see, most importantly, ATIS 126.0. So I've made a note of that. We're going to need ATIS. Similarly, once we get towards Ontario, we're going to need to contact Ontario Tower, or sorry, SoCal Approach, and tell them that we have the weather. So we need the ATIS there. Click on Ontario. Aha! ATIS now is 124.25. Made a note of that, but more importantly, elevation of the airport is 944 feet. We are cruising at 3,000. So once we get into Ontario, if we maintain 3,000, we're actually going to be just 2,000 feet above the airfield. So need to bear that in mind for our descent into pattern altitude, around about 1,000 to 1,500, probably 1,500 because we're in a twin-engine aircraft. Um, if we were to descend to zero, then we're going to have a problem. So with that all done, let us jump into the cockpit of this beast. Now it's very early morning here. I am running Active Sky. Active Sky is controlling the weather. Rex4 Texture Direct is controlling our weather textures. That's about it. Um, I have FTX Global installed and FTX Global Vector, but I'm not using any custom scenery for either John Wayne or Ontario. It's all stock scenery. Uh, bear that in mind. People always say, what scenery are you using? None. None. FTX Global Vector. 
FTX Global, that's about it. Okay, let's go ahead and set this aircraft up. Now I have checklists here, but remember the focus of Pilot Edge and the focus of this test for me is really radio management and radio communication. So I am gonna skip some of the things in the startup procedure, like for example, once we taxi, I'm not gonna do the full run up auto feather check and all that stuff. I know the aircraft is not gonna fail and I'm more concerned with testing my ATC ability today than I am on the correct method of managing this aircraft's systems. So just bear that in mind as well before you start posting up the hateful comments, which some of you so enjoy to do. Okay, prop controls, full forward. Let's do that. Let's pull these back. That's our mixture. Okay, prop controls, full forward. Mixture controls, idle cutoff. Battery switch on. Get rid of the yoke so you can see what you're doing. Next up, boost pumps on. Now, it doesn't say it in the checklist, but we will turn the beacon on at this point because we are under power. Now, cold start, it wants us to move the throttle about half an inch open, which I've done. Mixture, full forward for two to three seconds to prime it, then idle cutoff. So let's do that. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and cutoff. So that's primed. We will now start engine number two, the right-hand engine, by turning this all the way over to start. Hold it. And slide the mixture lever up. And then start washing the dials. See RPMs coming up nicely, and we're watching oil pressure rising here. Cylinder head temperature is starting to rise. Excellent. Let's repeat that procedure now on the number one engine. RPM has come up. Oil pressure has come up. Temperatures are rising. We are looking good. So with all that done, throttle now to 1,000 to 1,500. We'll put it up there. What I should also do, actually, and I didn't check this. That was foolish of me. It's the parking brake. This aircraft does have the ground friction bug. It won't actually start rolling um, like a normal aircraft would at this point. So we're kind of lucky there. Oil pressures are looking good. Temperatures are looking good. So with that done, generators now can both go on. We'll set our inverter. Fuel boost pumps now can go off. And the next page of the checklist. Brakes. Well, we're on the brakes. I'm not going to bother checking them. Load meters and voltmeters. These are down here. There they are. They are all looking normal and good. So that's great. Now we can turn the master avionics switch on, which is here. And with that done, we can start walking through the electronics stacks here. So GPS on. We're not actually going to use it, but we will turn it on. Let's turn on transponder. We are going to be using that because we're using advisories, so they will actually give us a squat code even though we're VFR. Okay. Now, I made a note of two radio frequencies before we started, which were the ATIS at uh, John Wayne and the ATIS at Ontario. What we'll do is that we'll actually put these into COM2 and then we'll switch between them um, as we need them and just click the monitor COM2 button. That's a lot easier than fiddling, fiddling with frequencies while we fly. Let's just get rid of this flashing message because it's annoying. So 12600, zero, zero. that will give us John Wayne Atis. And we'll put that into the active. And then Ontario Atis, Ontario, however you want to pronounce it, 124.25. So 124.25. Great. So they're all set. Now we need to start looking at radio frequencies. I have airport charts. I actually don't have them on a second computer, so I can't show you. But I do know John Wayne clearance is going to be on 118.00. So we'll dial that up somehow. There's 118.00. And we will also now dial up uh, John Wayne ground, which is the next frequency we're going to need, which is 120.8. Good, so they're all set. That's all we can do. The next frequency we're going to be given actually is John Wayne Tower, which is 126.8. If you're using something like the A2A Cessna, you can start setting up radio channels. Can't do that in the real air simulations aircraft, unfortunately, so we'll just have to make a mental note of that and get ready to feed that in at the appropriate time. So with all that done, let us see. I can't really do the before takeoff checklist at this point. What we should do at this point is just check our engines once again. I'm going to be sitting on the ground for a little while. Temperatures are starting to rise a little bit. So let's just half open the cow flaps here. Just get a little bit of air into the engines. And we will do a very quick radio check. Here we go. 
John Wayne Clearance, Duke 820 Mike Hotel for a radio check. Duke 820 Mike Hotel. John Wayne Clearance, loud and clear. Thank you very much, Zero Mike Hotel. Okay, so we know our radio is working. At this point, we can go ahead and file for clearance. Now, Pilot Edge, being a training network, does have a full training curriculum, training videos, and everything else. And they publish transcripts for each of the tests. So I have transcripts in front of me. We are going to vary it a little bit based on what uh, we are told by ATC. Actually, I have missed something. What we need to do before anything else is actually call up the ATIS. So let's go ahead and do that. We've already got our frequency set, so we just monitor COM2. Okay, so we do have a slight wind, but visibility is excellent. There are no clouds, many 20,000 feet. Everything's looking good. We have the barometric pressure, which is 29901. We'll dial that up here. And most importantly, we got from the ATIS there the information code, which today is Bravo. I will need that when I call John Wayne Clearance for um, clearance. I also need to get permission to do my V2 exam. John Wayne Clearance, Duke 820 Mike Hotel is type Beechcraft Duke B60 at the east ramp. Request VFR advisories to Ontario at 3000 with Bravo and if possible I'd like to do my V2 please. Duke 820 Mike Hotel, John Wayne Clearance. On departure fly heading 330, maintain VFR at or below 2500 till advised. Departure frequency 127.2, squawk 6024. Okay, so we'll just read that back now. Uh, fly heading 330, maintain VFR at or below 2500. SoCal departure frequency on 127.20, squawk 6024, zero Mike Hotel. Duke Zero Mike Hotel, read back is correct. Break. Other aircraft trying to read that back, that was not true. Oops. Now, at John Wayne, they do have ground monitoring, which means we need to turn our Duke transponder Mike on. Hotel. I do have your request for the V2. Your V2 starts now. Good luck. Thank you very much, Zero Mike Hotel. So, we have the transponder set. Once we start taxiing, we actually need to turn the transponder all the way on to alt mode so they can follow us on the ground. It's a ground following radar system. Um, but it needs to bear that in mind. So, with all that done, we are good actually now to head on over to ground and tell them that we are ready to taxi. We also need to tell them we have the weather. Now, Pilot Edge has paid our traffic controllers, but you'll often find the same controller manning different frequencies. Even so, you need to treat each controller as an individual you've not spoken to before. So you still- Five, two, one, three, nine, Long Beach clearance, uh, say type aircraft, and are you gonna be remaining in the pattern, or uh, say you're requested, like, part your heading? So you still need to give her all the information about who you are, the full call sign initially, and all that good stuff. So let's switch the frequency over. We are now on John Wayne ground. We will dial in now John Wayne Tower on the standby, 126.8. November 2394, Victor, John Wayne ground. So I would like to know, what should I do for complete my um, traffic pattern for the FR-01? Somebody else doing their exam, so There's we'll sit patiently and listen. 2394, Victor. If I understand your question correctly, you're asking what you need to do to request it to stay in the pattern. Is that correct? I would like to actually get the. I uh, I would like to get the rating. I can see. I can get the rating of the DFR pattern. It's V01. So it's a nine or four, Victor. Uh, we can do that. Stand by. And and what, I will, what I will also do before we start taxis, I actually set up the instruments here, ready to go. So we need to turn 330. We'll set that in heading hold. And we're going to intercept the radial according to Sky Vector. It says uh, 35 degrees. We actually need a little bit more than that. It's going to be about 45 degrees. We'll set that in here. So that if we need to use the autopilot, and we might do, then we can. I'm going to set an altitude here at 3000. 
Let's set heading mode and nav mode. Autopilot's not turned on, but everything is now set. So with all that done... So, uh, five, two, Whoops. one, tree, nine, long beach round. Runway two, five left at Delta, taxi via Foxtrot. Runway tree, four right, cross runway tree, four left. John Wayne Ground, Duke 820 Mike Hotel on the east ramp, ready to taxi with Bravo. Duke 820 Mike Hotel, John Wayne Ground. Good evening, runway 1-Runner, left at Kilo, taxi via Alpha Hotel Charlie. 1-Runner left at Kilo, taxi via Alpha Hotel and Charlie, Zero Mike Hotel. Alright, so taxi lights now can go on, nav lights can go on, we'll leave the strobes off, obviously. And we can start taxi. Now I'm going to be using track IR. It is a VFR flight and it's helpful to be able to look around. So I'm going to turn that on right now. There we are. And away we go. Parking brake off. Increase some power. Get through the FSX friction bug, unfortunately. And we'll taxi down to 19 left at Kilo. Via Alpha Hotel and Charlie. Air Force 22, Montgomery clearance. Loud and clear. Air Force. Ooh. Now the other issue we have is with the stock scenery here, we do not have a hotel taxiway. We have a golf taxiway. So what we're going to do is skip just behind golf, and that typically works out just fine. All uh, military bases are treated as non-towered airports. Actually, what I will do here is turn some lights on. It's very early in the morning. We do have some odd lighting going on here. So panel lights are now on, and away we go on our taxi. Now, this aircraft's a little twitchy on the taxi. Center for Victor, your V1 starts now. Uh, actually... As far as requesting to do a rating, um, you basically just say that you'd like to do the rating and then basically request it as if you were, you know, talking to a regular, you know, uh, a regular flight that you'd like to stay in the pattern and request taxi. Okay, so I've got to train for Victor, terminal gate, request. Uh, now what we will do, if I can keep a straight line here, hang on, let's turn track right off, off briefly. Um, we'll tune in Paradise, which is 122.2. So we don't have that up Victor. right now, so 122.2. One inner left at Kilo, taxi via Alpha Kilo. And in the future, just when you um, say you want to do the rating, go ahead and mention which rating. Uh, that'll help the controllers out a lot. I do understand that there you're going to be doing the DME up now. Your V1 starts now. Good luck. Yeah, I will do V1. So taxi via Alpha Kilo, runway. One niner left. Cessna niner four Victor negative is from one niner left at Kilo. It'll be intersection Kilo. Taxi via Alpha Kilo. Taxi via Alpha Kilo. That's one two three niner four Victor. Now, as I said, we're not going to do the full run up stuff into the full scenery. I don't actually know where the run up area is. It doesn't really match the map. So we'll assume everything's good, but once we get to the runway, we will set the aircraft up ready to go for takeoff. Which is uh, landing lights on, pumps on, make sure our trim is set. I have trim here on a radio. It's looking good now. On our, sorry, a rotary. There's the other aircraft there. If you can just see him in the distance, Duke Zero hopefully Mike he doesn't Hotel. get lost. Uh, Cessna is... Duke Zero Mike Hotel, stay on Alpha. I've got a runaway aircraft on Charlie, actually, um, headed southbound. Stay on Alpha, Roma 1 under left at Kilo, taxi via Alpha, Juliet, Charlie. Alpha, Juliet, Charlie to 1 under left at Kilo, stay on Alpha for now. Got it, Zero Mike Hotel. So, so nine or four, Victor, I show you, you look like you're taxiing southbound on Charlie, say intentions. I'm sorry, I don't know where the uh, kilo looks like I have to do 180. Okay, thank you. Cessna, 904 Victor, affirmative. Runway 1 on the left is behind you. Uh, if you can make a 180, uh, make a 180 so and then. We're looking for Juliet position. now, which I'm not actually sure where it is. I think it's coming up here. That's great. That's, That's Juliet. what I mentioned. I will do 180 and I will hold my position. Cessna, 2394 Victor. Cessna, 904 Victor, thank you. So we're going to turn left on Juliet, then turn right and pick up Kilo. Everything got us a little bit screwed up because of the new guy, but that's just fine. It is a training network, and as you heard, the controllers are actually very gentle if you do screw up. But obviously doing a rating as he's doing, that really might affect the outcome of his rating. 
So here's Juliet. Let's see where he is. He's down there. He's quite a way away, which is awesome. Cessna, one tree, niner. Uh, you're still with ground. Uh, try tower for your departure. Let's pick up a little bit of speed, get away from the guy behind us, who's now probably chasing us. Make sure our transponder is not on ult. It should be. I screwed up. Here's Kilo. So it's a 9 or 4, Victor. Assuming that you're pointing north now, basically north, uh, continue northbound on Charlie to intersection Kilo. Make a left turn on Kilo to hold short Roma 1 on your left at Kilo. Great. Northbound okay. departure. Next, on. Via Kila. Let's switch on over to the tower. And, um, oh, Let's dial up the next frequency, which is 127.2, so go departure. John Wayne Tower, Duke 820 Mike Hotel, ready at 19 left at Kilo. Duke 820, Mike Hotel, John Wayne Tower, 1230 at 5, runway 19 left, that kilo, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 19 left, 0 Mike Hotel. Alright, landing lights on, strobes on. Let's put some flaps down. Now it is quite a short runway, we are going to need pretty much all of it. So we will hold on the brace, get the power up. Baron 1125, Yankee, descend to maintain 5000. So holding on the brakes, power up. Let's watch it stabilize there. And try to hold our line. And rotate. Bit of a win. Positive rate gear up. Oh, quieter. Now the gear has come in. Alright, I'm going to be climbing at 120 ish. Coming up on 400 now, so we'll start our turn around to 330. Keep an eye out. There are other aircraft here. Number 820, Mike Hotel, radar contact, maintain VFR. Maintain VFR, zero Mike Hotel. Next time on Frugal Sim. I think we failed. One, three, five. Whoa, that's cheap, mate. Okay, stand by. Whoever just copied that takeoff clearance. Badger 85, Ontario Tower. 260, 10, runway 26, left clear for takeoff, no delay. I have traffic in it. Cancel that. That was not for you. Stand by. Mike Hotel, Torrance Ground, who are you looking for?